live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We've made it to Friday. It is April 19th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's Fiesta Friday and the start of Fiesta worked out as far as the weather. It really did. Mm -hmm. We had some really rough storms way yeah. north of us last night. We really dodged a bullet there, Justin. Yes. Yeah, you're right. They, they stayed off to the north along our frontal boundary, so we didn't really feel it, any of it. Fiesta Fiesta went great. Uh, it was a little warm, but other than that, it was really nice. So let me show you the radar right now. There's not a lot to be concerned with. Uh, we did have a couple of storms in Atascosa County about an hour ago, but those have since died down in a couple of showers around Katua. But I don't think we're going to have to worry about this too much. And really, all in all, your Friday is going to be fairly quiet. And good news here, a little cooler because we have a front that will slide through uh, a little bit later this afternoon. So uh, as we look at the temperatures here, the forecast for today, we're thinking a high of 78. Keep in mind yesterday we were close to 90, so this is a great change. A lot of North Texas will be cooler. You go down into deep South Texas, much warmer out ahead of this front. 91 in Laredo, 85 in Corpus Christi, 88 down in the valley today. So our forecast looks like this 10% uh, chance of rain. I can't count it out, but it's a low chance uh, and generally a mostly cloudy day. Noontime 74 and then again, we're up around 78 today. Uh, so it'll feel a lot better. Now this front is going to play a role as we go forward in time with some storm chances. Today, there's not much 10% uh, chance of rain this evening. We start to bring it up a little bit Saturday morning, some drizzle, maybe a small chance of a shower and then Saturday afternoon is when our rain chances ramp up 60% chance of rain could see a couple strong storms mixed in there and then it's Saturday night when our storm chances peak before we clear out on Sunday and wait till you see the high temperature on Sunday. You're going to love it. We're going to talk more about that here in just a few minutes, but Let's get over to RJ now and see how the roads are looking on this early Friday morning. All right, Justin. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be paying attention to that forecast because a lot of different things starting today when it comes to Fiesta, a lot of big events. But uh, we want to make sure you get out and about safe today on your Friday morning. Stick a quick. As we see right here, 90 at 36 Street, we still have some ongoing construction in this area on the west side of town. Hopefully they pick things up here over the next couple of minutes or so. Let's take a look at our map here because uh, we are also dealing with some overnight construction on the north side here. Basically the uh, eastbound lanes, or excuse me, the westbound lanes from Blanco all the way down to Rogers Ranch Parkway. Still seeing some ongoing construction in that area. Again, this is overnight construction that we're seeing on the far uh, north side. This should pick up here within the next 30 minutes or so for all of our folks on the north side of town. The rest of the city, everything else looking pretty good for the most part. No major accidents, no major delays, and more construction here on the northeast side. And that's really going to be kind of the story as we move uh, towards the uh, towards the weekend here because we have got another uh, pretty major closure coming out on the far northwest side at the 1604 I-10 interchange. We will talk about that coming up here in just a bit. Bart and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio fire investigators are trying to find the person that may have set a church on fire overnight. Happened at the 1200 block of East Crockett at New Testament Missionary Baptist Church. Firefighters arrived to find flames coming from the building. An SAFD spokesperson says a person who was there at the time saw the suspect leave after starting the fire and started chasing that suspect before calling firefighters for help. An official cause is under investigation. No injuries were reported. Miranda Casades, who was convicted of starving her four-year-old stepson to death, will now spend the next 25 years in prison. The jury took a little less than an hour to find her guilty of injury to a child. Now, during the punishment phase, the defense asked the jury to sentence Casades to probation, while the state was seeking the maximum punishment of life in prison. When Casades finally took the stand, she insisted she's not the one who starved four-year-old Benjamin Severa. Brandon, why did you starve Benjamin? I didn't starve him. You will not take responsibility for any of it. Correct? I never caused those injuries. Again, you're not taking responsibility for any of those injuries, correct? Yes, because I never hit him. Well, the case is not over yet, and Benjamin's father, Brandon Savetta, has yet to go to trial. He'll be back in court next month. He also faces up to life in prison if found guilty. Overnight, Israel retaliates against Iran. There are reports of at least one explosion in a city about 200 miles north of Iran's capital of Tehran. 
It comes five days after Iran fired more than 300 drones and missiles at Israel. And as ABC's Perry Rustin reports, nearly all of which were intercepted and downed with the help of the U.S. In video posted online, these flashes in the sky show Iran's air defense in action. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News Israeli missiles hit a site in Iran. This could potentially, it has clear potential to spark a major confrontation between Iran and Israel. Iranian state media reporting an explosion was heard in a city outside of Isfahan, not far from a major military base and nuclear facility, adding the nuclear facility was not damaged. Hours before the attack, Israel's defense minister saying Israel has the freedom of action to do what it wants. Oil prices rising overnight. 20% of the world's oil passes through the Hormuz Straits. Uh, right there on the, the very southern tip of Iran. And um, th this, will, this could certainly impact the flow of trade, the flow of oil, and cause even more unrest in other places around the world. Commercial flights were suspended over several Iranian cities, including the capital of Tehran. Airports are now back to normal operations. After sunrise, video from Isfahan shows life continuing, with morning traffic moving. The White House has been urging Israel to show restraint in hopes of preventing a larger war, saying if Israel did strike, they would do so alone. Perry Russom, ABC News, Washington. Fiesta has officially kicked off. Hundreds of people packed the plaza outside the Alamo Dome last night to celebrate, dance, and start this Fiesta season. Well, dozens of vendors sold Fiesta staples like chicken on a stick and those turkey legs. Others sold colorful clothing showing the culture and history of San Antonio. The Fiesta spirit was loud across the night, and this is just the start. We love our culture, we love colorful items, and it's what we incorporate into our merchandise. And Fiesta's the time to do that. Absolutely. Fiesta Fiesta was just the start, so we're going to have a full list of all the Fiesta activities happening across San Antonio on our website at kset.com. All right, so from now through April 28th, there are so many Fiesta events happening all over town. Today is the start of Fiesta Oyster Bake. I haven't been out there in over 10 years. I need to go back out. Then on Monday, it's the Texas Cavaliers River Parade on Tuesday, April 23rd. Kicks off night in old San Antonio, better known as Nyosa. That's right. And then next Thursday, the 25th, is the Battle of Flowers Band Festival. That's a fun one. Also, next Friday, yay, the 26th, that is the Battle of Flowers Parade. Of course, Mark and I will be there. And next Saturday, April 27th, has so many things going on that day. We start with the King William Fair in the morning, and we end the day with the Flambeau Night Parade. That's a good recap of almost everything going on. KSAT has a chance for you to enjoy a special party at Battle of Flowers and Flambeau. Scan one of these QR codes to purchase tickets. The tickets include assigned seating along the parade route, food, drinks, and the chance to hang out with some KSAT staffers, including a lot of the anchors. So while you're at it, you can also sign up to be a KSAT insider to be the first to get access to special events like these in the future. Really, can you believe we're a week away from another, another Battle of Flowers parade? It, I, I'm excited about it. It, it went mm -hmm. by fast. Well, the year has gone by fast, but right. I think because we were so focused on, on the eclipse and then it was over, it's like, okay, it's time for Fiesta. It's time for a Fiesta. And what you may not know is actually part of the Battle of Flowers that KSAT puts on is syndicated and is actually aired in other markets uh, at a later time. I had a friend in like Honolulu say, I just watched a parade in San Antonio <laughs> from a little while back. That is a cool thing. So San Antonio is everywhere now. Yes, going worldwide. Mm -hmm. 508, 71 degrees. Well, just ahead, how can you soon take advantage of AI, AT technology? I thought it was going to say AI. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I was like, okay, good. Are we having new technology out there? <laughs> Don't want to worry about that one. Okay, AI technology and your favorite meta apps like Instagram, Messenger, and Facebook. Thank you, Hardy. This year's theme for Earth Day is Planet versus Plastics. Up next, how to take plastics out of gardening and what you can replace it with. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. We're starting humid at 71 degrees again, but again, we got lucky for the start of Fiesta in our area. We're gonna check in with Justin to see what we can expect over the weekend. 12 minutes past the hour. Welcome back on your Friday morning. This year's theme for Earth Day is Planet versus Plastics, promoting a goal of reducing our plastic production by 60% by the year 2040. So when plastics break down into the soil, they release toxic chemicals into our ecosystem, which ends up in our water, 
food, and our air. In this week's Gardening with KSAT, Sarah Costa shows us how to take plastics out of gardening and what we can replace them with. Microplastics are making us sick. How? When they break down into our soil, they release toxic chemicals that end up in our food, water, or even in the air we breathe. This year's theme for Earth Day is planet versus plastics. So here's some alternative ways to keep plastic out of the garden and out of our soil. Your lawn kind of sucks. Don't want it. Don't replace it with turf. That's a lot of plastic in the soil. Plus, it gets really hot and harbors a lot of bacteria. Replace it with native plant beds and mulch. When making a flower bed or using mulch, never line with plastic or even fabric, which can have tiny bits of plastic in it. It will make a mess later and chokes the health of your soil. Mulch naturally fights weeds and feeds the soil with its micronutrients. And if you have a weed, just pull it. You can find native mulch at Rainbow Gardens and many more alternatives. Replace plastic pots with terracotta, clays, or even cocoa baskets, which are lined with coconut fibers and are 100% biodegradable. Get rid of those pesky plastic bags and make your own fertilizer, aka compost, by taking your old food scraps and letting nature do its thing. On my Instagram and ksat.com, you can find the story where I show you how to build your own compost bin for under 40 bucks. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The birthday girl was busy putting that together for us yesterday. Yes, and she was also busy at Fiesta Fiesta last night as well. But happy belated birthday, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah Costa. 514, 71 degrees. Let's look out there with a trans guide. Looking over at this holdup at I-35 at Topper Wine. We're going to get a check-in with RJ Marcus about that very soon. Lactate is 100% real milk, just without the lactose. Delicious, too. Just ask my old friend Kevin. Nothing like enjoying a cold one while watching the game. Who's winning? No idea. Real milk, real delicious. And don't forget to try some delicious, creamy lactate ice cream. What's that, Mabel? Mm. Wow, smart cow. Dupixent helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Dupixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. Welcome back, 518 on your Friday morning. And again, we begin with some flashing lights. But this isn't an accident, is it? Uh, oh, no, guys, okay. not an accident here on the northeast side. Uh, just some ongoing construction, yeah. as many of us have to deal with uh, pretty much, you know what, uh, on a daily basis. We got a lot of construction taking place across the city. We're going to talk about that here in just a bit. Uh, 35 northbound right there at Topper Wine. So this actually looks like they're starting to pick up things out there in the northbound lanes of 35. They had uh, closed down that Pat Booker exit and... Uh, uh, hopefully we could clear things out for some of our work there in the Northeast expansion going on out there for all of our folks in that uh, in that particular area. As far as incidents right now, we have a stalled vehicle being reported right now at US 90 westbound at General McMullen. And uh, you can see it's not causing too many delays right now for our folks in that area. But we are also dealing with some, some construction there on the eastbound lanes right there at uh, 36th Street. So a couple different things for our folks on the west side to kind of kind of contend with a little bit this morning, but it looks like traffic is moving through the area for the most part. All right, construction. Here we go again. We have another round of closures this weekend along 1604 and I-10. So quick check of the map here. So the biggest things to know is that 1604 East westbound, those will stay closed throughout the weekend starting tonight, 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock Monday morning. So uh, the clover leaves, all four clover leaves will be shut down there as well. Now some good news. This is different from last week because I-10 in both directions, that actually will stay open. But if you're going to get on I-10, to 1604, then keep in mind that, of course, you are going to have to take some alternate routes to get on 1604. And again, this closure starting tonight and going until Monday, 5 a.m. So let's show you some video exactly of what they are working on here. So TxDOT shared some of these photos with us. Uh, TxDOT, they're actually working on the second flyover ramp for that massive 1604 project. That ramp here, the new one, will connect 1604 West to I-10 West. And uh, it should be now the first one that they did, uh, which they already have the beams up for that one. 
one. That one will actually be done by the end of this year and uh, is expected to help the congestion in the area. So keep that in mind as they get these ramps built. That'll actually help the traffic in this area. Now, last week, crews installed several beams for the new ramp, and they're using 800 ton cranes to lift these beams. In fact, one of those beams was more than 140 feet long. They expect the weekend closures here for this new ramp installation for the rest of this month right there at 1604 and I-10, and they are installing approximately 20 steel beams for construction of those fly over ramps. So a lot going on there on the northwest side. I know uh, my, my buddy over here, Justin, <laughs> sometimes deal with these uh, issues here, but you can see the progress that they are making out there. Justin. Yeah, hashtag progress. <laughs> hey, <laughs> when are they going to be done with all the construction in San Antonio on our freeways, RJ? Ah, uh, just kidding. <laughs> it's kind of a rhetorical question. No. How's 2045? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Somewhere in the next couple decades. We appreciate it, though. It is progress. Absolutely. As we look outside right now, we've got some cloudy skies. We're waiting on a frontal boundary that will slide through a little bit later this morning, and that is going to bring some cooler weather, which after yesterday, we will certainly take. Temperatures were up near 90 yesterday. We had heat index values. Today, we will not deal with that. Right now, 71 in San Antonio, 71 in Seguin, 70 in Kerrville. Here's our forecast for today, 9 a.m., 70 degrees. And you see that 10% chance of rain there. Don't be too concerned. We could see a stray shower, but chances are most of us stay dry. Our high temperature only around 78. What an improvement with easterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here is a look at today's forecast and the difference that this frontal boundary will make. 60s and even 50s in the Texas Panhandle. We're in the 70s here. It will be warmer across deep south Texas. 92 in Laredo, 87 down in the valley today. So yes, that frontal boundary does make a difference and it will make a difference tonight if you're heading out to Oyster Baker Taste of New Orleans. Honestly, this is a pretty good forecast. 78 when things get underway by 7 o'clock, 76. Maybe a few more clouds at 10 o'clock, 71. And yes, there is that very, very small chance for shower, but it shouldn't interrupt um, any goings on tonight. Now things change a little bit as we get into tomorrow. Here comes the front. This is 4 o'clock today. Notice, yeah, the models don't show much for this afternoon. But as we get into tonight, a few storms out west. We'll watch Del Rio and Eagle Pass for some storms that may cross over from Mexico. Those should die down as they push east. I don't think we see it here in San Antonio. But tomorrow morning, maybe a few sprinkles, some drizzle to start. Midday is pretty quiet, but afternoon, by the afternoon hours, we're going to start to see showers and storms rapidly develop uh, along a secondary push uh, with a sort of a secondary front here. And then by midnight, this is when we could see some widespread showers and storms around the area before everything clears out by Sunday morning. How much rain could we see? I think up to an inch potentially here in San Antonio. Maybe some places in the hill country could be looking at uh, one and a half inches to two inches. Either way, this is good rain and we're not looking for widespread flooding or anything like that, but there could be a couple of strong storms involved here. This is a severe weather outlook for Saturday. It's low end on a scale of one to five a one. But we'll have to watch for a couple strong ones here and there. We can rain chances, small chances this evening, a little better chance Saturday morning, but much better chances Saturday afternoon and Saturday night before again this all clears out on Sunday. And I'll tell you, Sunday is going to be a chilly day by April standards. 67 for a high, windy, cool or low humidity. Great weather for the River Parade on Monday in Niosa on Tuesday, but we will put some rain chances back in by the middle and end of next week. We'll be right back. Meta is expanding its AI powered smart assistant across all its apps. ABC's Andrew Fujii has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Meta's update to its AI assistant. The new smart software is now available on Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and Facebook. The company calls it the most intelligent AI assistant you can use for free. Next, Samsung is offering a new mid-range smartphone in the U.S. The Galaxy A35 comes in two colors, blue and lilac. It features a high-definition display and software to adjust the screen's tone depending on light conditions. The A35 starts at $400. Finally, Apple has updated its iOS 17 to help make your hotel stay more comfortable with new features to let you use AirPlay to stream movies from an Apple device directly to your room's smart TV. For now, it's only available at select IHG hotels, but Apple says more will be added soon. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 527, 71 degrees.
Well, one of the best things about Fiesta is all of that awesome food, eh, as long as it doesn't make you sick. So up next, we're going to show you how Metro Health environmental officers are making sure your party doesn't end in a bad way. And later this morning, join us at Conviva Care Center on San Pedro, just south of North Star Mall for your KSAP Fiesta medal. Uh, let's see, we're all going to be out there. Tiffany, Stephanie, myself out there live for GMSA at 9. We'll be live for the whole hour giving out Fiesta medals and meeting you. You start li lining up at 8.30 this morning and the giveaway starts right around 9 o'clock. We would love to see you out there. Good morning. It is Friday, April 19th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful week and it's been kind of fun, you know, around the newsroom. Well, of course, across San Antonio with Fiesta starting yesterday. The good vibes out there this yeah. morning. There are. And that's uh, that's one of the reasons Mike's not here this morning because he was covering Fiesta Fiesta yeah. last night. And I, I think they had a, a great time from what I could tell. Uh, the, the weather was a little warm. That's OK. It's OK. Uh, we're we're going to get some cooler weather today. This is the fantastic news. You'll see temperatures in the 70s for highs today. What a change. As we look at the authority radar right now, uh, we do have a few showers out there that we were tracking earlier. These have since dissipated. In fact, we had a couple of lightning strikes down in Atascosa County a little bit earlier this morning, but those storms have uh, since gone away. And I, I think our rain chances today are generally pretty low. Here's a look at the hour by hour forecast. Yeah, we'll keep a 10% chance in there, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Partly to mostly cloudy skies, noontime 74. And there's your high, only 78. And this is because our frontal battery slides through and pulls up stationary. Now that front will play a role in some rain chances as we get into tomorrow. Yesterday's pollen count, mold is at 230, pecan 50. Look at oak, it's at 20. I think oak season's done. Uh, we'll see where it ends up today. But uh, if you look at the trees, it looks like we are finished with oak season, which a lot of people are celebrating. Uh, how are the roads looking this morning? Let's get over to RJ now for the latest on your early morning commute. All right, Justin. Yeah, things looking pretty good so far. If you're about to step out, as we mentioned, Fiesta Fiesta, of course, yesterday. So maybe some people getting a little bit later start to their Friday morning. But uh, for the most part, again, traffic looking pretty good out there. Just dealing with some ongoing construction in many parts of our areas. We take a look here at 35 northbound at Topper Wine for all of our folks on the northeast side of town. It looks like they've started to clear things out here in this area. So we are now getting traffic moving along pretty smoothly in that area. Let's give you a couple more shots here. That one 90 at 36th Street. Still some construction there. 1604 Petranco, I-10 and free of the downtown area. Traffic looking pretty good in both directions there. A couple things to let you know about on 90 right now. We have a stalled vehicle being reported 90 westbound at General McMullen. And we saw that camera earlier. That's construction going on 90 eastbound at 36th Street. And if we take a one more shot here, kind of zoom out a little bit. Um, this just popped up on our map. Again, this is on 90 at West Military, right there, right before uh, the Loop 410 interchange there with US 90. So a couple different things there for our folks in that part of town, especially on the west side. Of course, we know that things get uh, very busy out there as people make their way out. All right, we are expecting more people out and about as we get closer to our 6 o'clock hour. Again, maybe some folks getting a little bit later start and maybe uh, stayed up a little bit late last night for Fiesta Fiesta, but we will continue to monitor the roads. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thanks, RJ. Today, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning of a spike in measles cases. The U.S. elimination status may be threatened with up to 121 cases reported in the country as of April 11, 2020, 2024. Our Patty Santos has been looking closely at what that threat looks like for us here in San Antonio. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I spoke with a doctor who tells me there's no reports of cases here in Texas yet, but we should all be on all alert. And here's why. Measles is highly infectious. It's transmitted by air. And a measles patient can infect up to 90% of those they come in close contact with, with uh, who are not vaccinated against it. Most children get their measles shots between one and four years old, and it takes two shots to be fully protected. Doctors say if you have traveled to countries that are under vaccinated, you should be cautious that you might be carrying the respiratory illness without showing signs, but you don't have to travel outside of the U.S. to be infected. Texas is a big state. We have a lot of people in Texas and we travel in and out of Texas to go to other countries. And so we need to be aware of that. And we have an influx of individuals coming in. And so we know that our, those individuals may not be vaccinated, they may be exposed, and that may put the rest of our population at risk. So we have to be careful and we have to have our guard up and we need to protect our children, make sure they get the vaccine for measles. 
All right, so you think, what? how do I know? How do I know if I have it? The early signs are a high fever, cough, and red eyes. That's followed over the next two to three weeks by a rash and spots inside the mouth. It looks like a white spots with a red background. The majority of adults have received the measles shot. Coming up in the next hour, I'm going to tell you why older adults are at risk and what you need to do if and when a measles case is reported in our community. Guys? Patty, thank you. In other headlines this morning, yet another close call at a major U.S. airport, this time a near collision near Washington, D.C. Audio captured the reaction in the control tower. ABC's Andrew Dembert has the details. Stop, stop, 2937, stop. New details about another close call at a major airport as two passenger jets full of passengers narrowly missed colliding at Washington's Reagan Airport yesterday. This was a real potential and uh, any further mistake made in one form or another and we would have had a tragedy. Investigators say an air traffic controller instructed a Southwest flight bound for Orlando to taxi across a runway. Seconds later, a JetBlue flight started rolling down the same runway, setting both planes on a collision course. Here's the moment the control tower realized what was happening. We stop. We were cleared to cross runway four. The pilots quickly aborting takeoff, slamming on the brakes, coming within 400 feet of each other, according to Flight Radar 24 data. When I hear 400 feet, uh, I, what I hear is basically that there was no further margin for error, no additional mistake of any sort. Somebody from the tower not stating stop in time, uh, somebody not responding in one of the cockpits, and uh, we would have had a, a collision. It comes on the heels of several recent close calls, including in Austin, Texas last year, when a FedEx cargo plane preparing to land flew over a Southwest jet that was taking off, coming within about 100 feet of colliding. Southwest abort. FedEx is on the go. And just this week, the FAA announced it's sending new runway safety technology to four airports this summer, Austin, Dallas, Nashville, and Indianapolis. The new system uses satellite data to display surface traffic for air traffic controllers. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Now, it's been a big week for Caitlin Clark. Not only was she selected as the number one overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, there's now talk that she could sign a multi-million dollar endorsement deal with Nike. The contract is rumored to include a signature shoe and will be worth eight figures, far more than her starting pay with the Indiana Fever. While well, Clark's performance in her final collegiate season with the Iowa Hawkeyes helped attract record-breaking TV audiences and sell out crowds in arenas around the country. And it just so happens she wore Nikes during her record-breaking college basketball career. That is awesome news. Congratulations. Just the beginning of endorsement deals for many of those yes. uh, draft picks from this year's draft. Yes, looking forward to, to seeing all of that. 538, 71 degrees. Well, Fiesta synonymous with a lot of great food. Up next, how Metro Health inspectors are making sure food vendors meet health and sanitation standards. Years ago, I went out with health inspectors to do that kind of thing, and they are they're that, on it. That's good. That is good. Good, good for hear. all of us. 538, as we said, outside with live cam right now. Uh, no storms to speak of right now, but we're not quite done. Mike has your, sorry, Mike, not Mike, Justin Aww. has your Fiesta Weekend forecast. I 541 Fiesta may be fun, but it comes with a lot of work to make sure all that food is safe. John Paul Barajas shows us what's being done to keep everyone healthy. Fiesta synonymous with fantastic food. It's good. It's very good. I like it. How would you describe your tacos al pastor? They're the best in town. But what you don't see behind the scenes of all the fun? The people working to keep everyone safe. I'm just going to go and do an inspection real quick of your booth. Metro health inspectors are making sure food vendors meet health and sanitation standards. You take a bite and something that seems hot may not be hot enough according to the temperature requirements that we have. And you might eat it and go on about your night and not know you're set to the next day. According to Metro Health, its environmental officers will be at every Fiesta event to check booths routinely from the basics. Uh, paper towels and hand soap and then also uh, your dispenser has to have a, uh, a spigot on it. To testing the cleaning chemicals for each vendor. That's so what's strong. the sweet spot you guys are aiming for? 50 to 100. And then if you put too little bleach, it is very, very light in color and it doesn't do enough so they're looking for a certain. And making sure food is cooked and stored at proper temperatures. Both hot. There it goes. 
yeah, so that's definitely above 135. And cold. Okay, so yesterday, mind you, I was supposed to be at 41, and you're at 60. So everyone, myself included, can indulge. That's good. <laughs> Keep it on the hot day. And worry about the real issues, like finding your favorite food. Not chicken on the sticks, I'm not gonna wait in the long line. Uh, Maria's tortillas. Come on, chicken on the sticks a classic. Yeah, it is a classic, but. Okay, I'll say <laughs> Jokes aside, if you see something you don't think is up to code, you can always report it to 311. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Steph, how long would you wait in line for chicken on a stick? Um, I mean, not that long. I mean, yeah. so yeah, I, I mean, Niosa, the lines are long. Yeah. But they, at least when I've been there, the, the, it goes pretty fast. It does go pretty so. fast. I've seen people that are enjoying the party mm -hmm. and stay in line for up to an hour. Well, no, depending I'm, on the peak times. I'm not that patient. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> 543, 71 degrees. Up next, we're going to meet a new little furry friend from the Animal Defense League. Well, if you want to see just an itty bitty, <laughs> which can't adopt yet, we'll talk more about that. Felicia's here from the Animal <laughs> Defense League, and oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, this is Empanada. Little Empanada. <laughs> oh my, what a great name. And she is almost available for adoption. She's in foster care right now, but she should be ready in about a week. Mm -hmm. And then she will get her space surgery and find her forever family. Oh, and her fur, of course, is a little kitty fur, but it is just yeah. soft as can be. And, you know, and being in foster care, they always use fosters to raise these little ones like that. If you like the little babies and then you know, put them back, you can, you can volunteer to be yeah. a foster like that. And we provide you with everything. Oh. So blankets, towels, bedding, food, everything that you need, toys, litter boxes, and litter. <laughs> you can foster as long as you want to. Yes, so, definitely. As huh. many pets as you like. <laughs> All right. Fiesta time, of course. Yeah. The Fiesta medals, which I absolutely love. And notice the 90 on there. Big anniversary for y'all. Yes, it's our 90th anniversary, which is amazing. Animal Defense League has been here in San Antonio for 90 years. Wow. Awesome. And, of course, it is Fiesta time, so we are going big. <laughs> <laughs> These are shirts oh for the animals. Yes, so <laughs> if your dog or maybe your cat likes yeah. to dress up, this is a perfect opportunity to have them <laughs> sport it, our Fiesta merch. And of course, the people yes, t-shirts as, well. as well. So, yes. <laughs> so, and you can pick these up at uh, at um, both locations, okay. so either Nacogdoches or our Paw Jolly Adoption Center. Okay. Um, and if you see us out and about at the different events, um, you know, throughout Fiesta, of course, definitely we'll have them for sale as, as well. Oh, wonderful. Well, yeah. if you'd like more information about all the different things, you know, head on out there again, 1130 at Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, or catch them at some of the events. You can go to their website and see about that. And then mm -hmm. if you would like to find out more, and it's going to be a couple of weeks till little empanada is ready. But oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> sweet little baby! Yeah, <laughs> head on over again, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, what a perfect name there for uh, Fiesta Time and the food that we're going to see here. Empanada. Hopefully we can find her a good home. All right, guys, things uh, certainly getting a little bit busy on the west side of town. A lot of different things popping up on US 90 right now. So you look behind me here. We have a stalled vehicle. This is going to be 90 westbound right there at Zarzamora Street for all of our folks coming in from 35, 90 and coming out of the south downtown area. See the stalled vehicle? It looks like it's off to the shoulder, but still causing some delays there for all of our folks there making their way through. 90 westbound at Zarzamora Street. A couple other things right now in this area. We have uh, still this stalled vehicle there at 90 at General McMullen. Uh, westbound also and also westbound here uh, 90 at uh, West Military right there a little bit north of Lackland Air Force Base. So a lot of different things taking place in 90 right now. If we go towards more towards the downtown area, we have a stalled vehicle I-35 northbound at Cesar Chavez right there uh, a little bit past uh, the South Alamo exit there. But that's off to the frontage road, so not causing too many major delays at the moment. All right, uh, construction this weekend. Here we go again. Got another round of construction taking place here at the 1604 I-10 interchange. Uh, biggest things to take away from this, 1604 East Westbound, that will be shut down starting <coughs> tonight uh, through Monday, 5 a.m. Of course, this is a weather permitting. All four clover leaves, those will be closed as well. Now, some good news here. This is different from last week, but I-10 East and Westbound, that will stay open. But if you're trying to get from I-10 to 1604, you will have to obviously find some alternate routes in that area. And again, this closure taking place tonight through Monday, 5 a.m. So 
Another round of closures up there, but shouldn't be as bad as last week. I know right. last week okay. really kind of threw a lot of people off because that was the full interchange. At least I-10 is staying open this weekend. That's good okay. news. That Justin's is, giving me a look. Yes, good news. <laughs> what are you talking about? Some, some uh, good news, right? Weather permitting, too. Saturday, yes. there could be some storms around, so they may uh, uh, delay. Okay. You know, just keep an eye on it. RJ will keep you <laughs> yeah. informed. Uh, let's go for some not-so-good news to some good news Aww. or happy news. Uh, Bubbles is ready for a chicken on a stick. That is good news. Adorable. I agree. Aww. Go on, Bubbles, with your bad <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, that's a little skirt. Oh, I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was yeah. a blanket at first, but no, that's a, that's was, a yeah. fiesta it, skirt. It, it, it was that hidden is. from my spot in the <laughs> studio. Yeah, that's, that's really good cute. Look. Bubbles. Yeah, Bubbles is ready. Aww. Man, you guys have done a fantastic job with the, uh, the pets, and we've seen a lot of fiesta pictures just in general. Keep them coming. Uh, we'll keep showing them, and we'll uh, keep showing them on our website as well. Uh, speaking of Fiesta, Oyster Bay Taste of New Orleans going on starting tonight. Things get underway around 5 o'clock, continuing on to around 11 p.m. tonight. Here's the forecast. If you're heading out early, temperatures will be in the mid-70s. Really not bad compared to yesterday, mostly cloudy skies. There is a very small chance for shower, uh, but I don't think we're going to see a lot today. 76 to 7 o'clock, 71 at 10 p.m. should be good for all your Fiesta plans tonight or whatever plans you may have. Uh, there's a look at some of the high temperatures. Now, they'll be a little bit tricky today because we have that front coming through. So cooler to the north, warmer to the south, depending on where this frontal boundary sets up. I think it comes through a little bit later this morning and cools us down here in town. But if you're watching from, say, Pearsall, Carrizo Springs, it's still going to be warm this afternoon. If you're watching from the Hill Country, quite a bit cooler than yesterday. Uh, here's a look at that forecast, and that's the front I'm talking about. So it comes through uh, by 4 o'clock today, pulls up stationary. This model does not show a whole lot today, and I don't think we're going to see a lot on radar. But as we get into tonight, there could be some storms that drift in from Mexico. As usual, these storms could be on the strong side, so we'll keep an eye on that, especially for Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Then as we get into tomorrow morning, maybe some drizzle, a few showers around. Midday tomorrow is probably quiet. We're going to see storms building to our north, but then the energy seeps south as this front takes uh, another push uh, to the south and then this is where we start to see some storms this is around seven o'clock so saturday evening plans we definitely want to keep an eye on this uh, we could see a couple strong storms too and then some pockets of heavy rain this is around 10 o'clock shows those storms starting to progress south a bit with this frontal boundary but i think rain chances hang around through midnight and probably early on sunday before everything clears out how much rain could we see perhaps up to an inch here in San Antonio. And then you're going to see some higher totals probably in the hill country, maybe one to two inches in some spots where we see some localized heavy rain. So this could be some good rain for us. And we've again got to mention there could be a few strong storms involved here. It's a low end risk, uh, but some gusty winds perhaps with uh, some of the more uh, powerful storms. We can rain chances 20% Saturday morning. We bring it up to 60% Saturday afternoon. Highest chance is Saturday night, but good news here. Sunday looks great. Uh, we'll see things clear out with some low humidity. And Sunday will be chilly and windy. 67, 75 Monday after some mornings in the 50s. And then we warm back up next week and add in some more rain chances by Wednesday into Thursday. We'll be right back. Good morning. It's great to be with you here on a Friday. Of course, we'll start with that breaking news overnight. Israel retaliating against Iran. Our team will be tracking all the latest developments. And a jury has been seated in the criminal trial of former President Trump here in New York. Dan Abrams will tell us what to expect next. We also have an incredible ray of sunshine this morning honoring a beloved choir director at a Dallas area school. So we've got an unforgettable surprise that will get your weekend started right. Stick around. Four-time NBA champion and Spurs legend Tony Parker is selling his home. The Bernie area mansion comes with six bedrooms, five baths, and a private water park. For real. Right now on KSAT.com, you can take a video tour of the home. By the way, in case you're wondering, Tony Parker's house can be yours for a cool $16.5 million. Well, later this morning, join us at the Conviva Care Center on San Pedro West Rampart for your KSAT Fiesta Medal. Stephanie, Tiffany, and myself will be out there live for GMSA at 9, giving out Fiesta Medals. You can start lining up at 8.30 this morning, and the giveaway begins at 9. We hope to see you out there.